Hey YouTube, I'm your host Joss. Welcome back to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. Our new social media pages are officially linked down below, so make sure you guys go and give us a follow before continuing with this video. Today we are talking about curses. No, not curse words, like curses that people get after partaking in something bad or creepy. It's often said that actors who've worked on horror films become cursed or haunted themselves. And while some people don't believe that, there's some that do. How about we let some of the actors share their own stories with today's list of top Top 10 actors who were cursed after a movie role. Let's jump in. Starting off our list at number 10 is James Brolin. Yes, it is in fact Josh Brolin's dad, like father, like son. He was actually in one of the most legendary horror film series of all time, the Amityville Horror. He took on the lead role in the 1979 adaptation, but was really hesitant at first. Apparently when going for the role, there was no script to review, so he decided to read the book to get an idea if the project was for him or not. He explained during an interview with the AV Club, and I quote, I was reading this novel at night and it's 2 in the morning. Well, I would hang my pants on the door of the bedroom, I'd throw them over the corner of the main door coming into the bedroom, and all of a sudden, the pants fell off the door and onto the floor. I was at a scary part of this book, so it surprised me. I started laughing and after I recovered, I thought, I've got to do this movie. And so he did. However, he later explained that things were never the same after being a part of the movie. He said the objects around his house continued to move on their own, and he doesn't feel that it's a coincidence but that some of the hauntings have actually stayed with him. I don't know if any paycheck is worth that, I would not be okay with any of that. At number 9 we have Vera Farmiga. The actress plays the paranormal investigator Lorraine Warren in the horror movie series The Conjuring. After watching her performance, we would never know that the actress had a difficult time during filming and actually suffers from it still. The Conjuring was released back in 2013 and is based on the real life haunting of the Perrin family. The actress says she felt uneasy about taking the job and filming the movie altogether. But when she did, she refused to bring home her script from the set. She reported that she had this fear that it would cast bad energy into her house. However, she claims that it didn't work. She tells a story during an interview saying that one night she opened her laptop and noticed three slashes across the screen, almost like a claw mark, without any explanation. If that wasn't scary enough, she said the first day after she finished shooting, she returned home to New York where she woke up with the same marking on her thigh. She said, it was these three very distinct what looks like claw marks that long nails or long fingertips could make. There is clear evidence of some strangeness that occurred. My husband did not do that to me. I did not scratch some mosquito bite. It's inexplicable. We know she's not lying because during filming, the real Perrin family visited the set. After their day on set, Carolyn Perrin reported that she was pushed to the ground once she returned home. She said she felt like something from set had come home with her. Actress Vera Farmiga seems to have brought something with her too, some sort of cursed energy. Coming in at number 8 is Linda Blair, the 13 year old actress at the time who took on the role of Reagan in one of the most iconic horror films to this day, The Exorcist. There has been controversy since the film's release back in 1973 regarding if the film is actually haunted and has an evil curse. For starters, a fire broke out on set and burnt down the entire set of Reagan's household. However, her bedroom was the one thing that didn't catch flames. The cast was so shaken to the core, believing that demons had possessed the house, that they had a real pastor exercised the new set before they began filming again. Things were especially bad for actress Linda Blair who had to film a horrific possession scene. While filming the scene, she reported she was thrown out of the bed and onto the floor, causing her to injure her back. Once filming was over, religious officials believed the young girl had actually become possessed and suggested she go to a real exorcism. The exorcist curse is nothing to mess around with. After the release of the film, a total of 8 deaths occurred, actors and production that were all a part of the movie. Linda Blair remembers it as a difficult time of her life and doesn't really enjoy speaking about it. What do you guys think? Do you think the exorcist curse is a real thing or is all of this just a coincidence? Taking our number 7 spot is Jennifer Carpenter, also known as Emily Rose from the horror movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Just hearing the title, we know that this role would be a hard one to play. Although the actress did enjoy taking on the role, she told Dread Central that while filming the religious horror movie, strange things started happening to her after hours. She said she does believe there was some sort of negative energy or spirit that was attached to the film. She said that one particular thing kept happening and it was her radio would turn on by itself in the middle of the night. Why it was especially scary was because it happened around 3am which is a significant
second time that's in the movie. It's said to be the devil's hour. She explained that one time it was so scary because her radio turned on blasting the song Alive by Pearl Jam really loud. Other co-stars admitted that their televisions and radios would also turn on at 3am each night. So the haunted curse was on to more than just Jennifer Carpenter. In at number 6 is Jo Beth Williams. The actress took on the motherly role in the 1982 horror classic film The Poltergeist. A variety of terrifying things were reported happening on this set, but one thing that left Jo Beth Williams in shock was her skeleton scene. She expresses in interviews that Steven Spielberg, the writer and producer, insisted on using real human skeletal remains as props for the movie. The actress felt that these skulls may have spirits that remained with her even outside of the set. She admitted during an interview that she thinks she was haunted afterwards by a spirit and that she noticed things moving on their own throughout her house. While filming, the actress rented an apartment in LA since she wasn't from there and said the pictures on her wall would be slanted and crooked when she got home from set. She said she would fix them every day and make them straight, but every day they would still move. She's not the only one who experienced a curse from the movie, so I can't imagine that she's making anything up. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Isabel Ajani. The actress won a Caesar Award for her performance in the movie Possession, but the actress says the intense physical and emotional demands of the role were difficult to come back from. The movie came out in 1981 and is known to be one of the most horrifying and shocking films. The actress told a French magazine that it took her years of therapy to get her possessed character Anna out of her system. She said she suffered from a variety of mental illness elements after shooting the movie and said she would never attempt another movie role like it. Sources around her were convinced that she was in fact possessed even after the filming stopped. You know there's something wrong when you have to go through years of therapy after shooting a movie. Maybe I don't want to be an actress. In at number 4 is Patrick Wilson, the actor who played Ed Warren in The Conjuring alongside Verma Farmiga who played his wife. We already heard her side of the story, but turns out Patrick Wilson also felt cursed after being involved in the movie. He opened up during an interview and explained that he began to realize weird things happening while filming the second film in 2016. One particular incident that happened on set was so disturbing that they brought a priest to bless the set before they continued to film. He told Metro, It was a huge curtain that went from the floor to the ceiling, which was sort of waving violently and there was no door or fan on. No nothing. That was a very, very odd occurrence because nothing else was moving around it and nothing was blowing. You didn't even hear any air, but you watched these curtains sort of violently going. The actor also admitted he has always been a skeptic when it comes to supernatural elements, but after the second film, he said he believes his own house was haunted. During an interview with The Independent, he said, I've heard people on two different occasions say they've heard kids laughter in the middle of the night in my house. Oh, hell no. Haunted little kids are like my biggest fear. I always feel that like when little kids are in scary movies, it is 10 times scarier. Just saying. Alright guys, our list continues with number 3 with Dominique Dunn. She was also another actress who had the poltergeist curse, but one that is far more serious than one could imagine. One story from the film set is famously known and it's the story of Oliver Robbins, who nearly died on set when he was choked by the arms of an evil puppet. Like, no exaggeration, Steven Spielberg admitted he had to actually save the actor from the doll. This is why it was an even bigger shock when actress Dominique Dunn was murdered not too long after the release of the film. The most disturbing part was that she was strangled to death by her ex-boyfriend. People believe that this was no coincidence and that the film was actually cursed. Her role in the movie was the haunted family's teenage daughter, which led people to believe she was actually cursed and didn't even know it. Not only her, but a few years after the release, her co-star Heather O'Rourke also died at the young age of 13 years old. I don't know about you guys, but this whole poltergeist curse thing seems pretty legit to me. Taking over the number 2 spot is Vic Morrow from the movie The Twilight Zone. The actor tried tragically died while filming a scene for the movie and some believe it was because the movie was cursed. His death was caught on tape since they were filming and because of how it happened, people think it was too much of a coincidence to just be a freak accident. The actor died because a helicopter that was flying above him in the scene came crashing down due to an explosion and landed directly on top of him. The worst part about it was that he was carrying two child actors in his arms, a 6 year old and a 7 year old. The death was so horrific that it broke news and caused a lot of controversy. One child was crushed to death while the other one was decapitated. And the co-director, special effects coordinator, and the pilot were all charged with manslaughter. The court spoke on the child labor laws that were broken at the time. The laws don't allow kids to work at night or anywhere near explosives. According to the New York Times, the father of one of the child actors testified that he wasn't told there would be pyrotechnics or a low flying helicopter. Some people believed it was a mix of negligence and a freak accident, while others thought the movie, which focused on scary subjects, is 
what cursed the scene. In our number one spot is Gregory Peck, the star actor of the horror film The Omen. Everyone who worked on the film reported that the set was 100% haunted by demons because the subject of the film was all about the Antichrist. The actor explains that he felt like he was cursed because when he was on a plane ride with the screenwriter, they were struck by lightning, which would seem like a one in a million chance, right? Wrong. Not too long after, Harvey Bernhard, the producer, was nearly struck by lightning while visiting Rome. They all admitted their feelings that people involved in the film were cursed by the evil spirits it involved. The most tragic event that convinced the actor this curse was in fact true was the car accident that killed the special effects director John Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore. Liz was decapitated in the crash, which was the eeriest part because the accident actually occurred on Friday the 13th and is almost identical to the movie's most violent scene, where a man gets decapitated by a vehicle. Coincidence? I think not. Starting off the list at number 10 is Jim Caviezel. The incredibly talented actor took on the difficult role as Jesus in The Passion of the Christ. It's just common sense to know that it takes a certain amount of strength, talent, and skill to commit to a character like this and bring it to life. In 2004, Mel Gibson's retelling of the story caused a lot of controversy upon the movie's release. Some were based on religious views and beliefs, while others were more concerned about the strange occurrences that happened during production. Gibson was always reporting that different cast and crew members were experiencing different forms of miracles, but it didn't sit well with some when members were struck by lightning. Lightning struck the assistant director Jan Michelli twice and also the actor who played Jesus himself, Jim Caviezel. Neither of them faced serious injuries, but you can't help but feel like they got cursed in some way from this movie. The odds of being struck by lightning are literally one in a million. Caviezel also sustained other injuries while filming, and one of them left him with permanent scarring on his back, the same way Jesus would have had slash scars on his. The movie itself will be interpreted differently depending on the viewer's religious beliefs, but generally speaking, some people believe there's some sort of curse going on here. At number 9 is James Dean, who died shortly before the release of his movie Rebel Without a Cause. The production of the movie ran smoothly and the stars James Dean, Natalie Wood, and Sal Mineo all became close friends while making the movie. It was after the movie came out did people start to believe the movie had some sort of curse behind it. The iconic actor James Dean had his career cut short when he tragically died in 1955. The actor began to have a passion for cars and while filming the movie he began to race in professional events. However, on September 30th he was driving down a California highway and slammed his car into the side of a turning vehicle. He suffered from severe injuries and was pronounced dead on the scene. People started to believe it was because of the movie that his car crashed since it was the thing that brought him to his passion for cars. It was also hard for people to believe a professional racer would somehow crash his car at 85 miles per hour into another vehicle. Why the curse rumor kept spreading was because his two co-stars, Natalie Wood and Sal Mineo, also died after the movie by tragic incidents. A pizza delivery man stabbed Sal to death in an alley, and Natalie Wood died in a horrific drowning accident. Some people say it is all just a tragic coincidence, while others believe that it is a sadistic curse. What do you guys think? Swiping the number 8 spot is George Reeves, the actor who played Superman in the 1950s and died under mysterious circumstances. Circumstances. Believe it or not, there is a theory going around called the Superman curse that apparently took place many years ago. It started with George Reeves, who died tragically after taking on the role of the hero. Police ruled his death as a suicide by gunshot, but his fingerprints were never actually discovered on the weapon. It was on June 16, 1959, that he died between 1.30 to 2 a.m. A number of questionable findings were reported by the investigators. Not only were no fingerprints recovered from the gun, but no gunpowder residue was even found on George's hands. The curse was said to continue when the role was later taken on by Christopher Reeve in the 1979 Superman movie, and he continued for years after that. But in 1985, the actor suffered from a severe injury while horseback riding, and it left him paralyzed from the neck down. He continued to suffer for years, but didn't give up on his recovery or his acting career. However, on October 10th, 2004, the actor ended up passing away after he fell into a coma from a horrible infected ulcer. People believe this Superman curse was no coincidence but luckily future Superman actors are still going strong. Taking our number 7 spot is John Wayne who played Genghis Khan in The Conqueror. The actor spent a long time being tormented after the movie's release because of the questionable casting that people were calling racist. After filming the movie, the actor later was diagnosed with lung cancer in 1964, and by the year 1980, almost half of the combined cast and crew had developed 
cancer and died from the disease. Research began to surface and people believed the movie had a curse, which is how a large amount of people linked to one movie died. In the 1950s, nuclear testing was a common thing and it was well known to be radioactive and potentially lethal. Which is why it's hard to believe that the producers of the movie would decide to shoot the movie near a nuclear testing site. The movie was filmed near the remote town of St. George in the Utah desert, which was only a hundred miles away from the infamous Nevada test site. Over the years, people involved in the movie came forward with being diagnosed with cancer. Out of 200 people who worked on the production, 92 of them died of cancer, including John Wayne. At the time the movie was being filmed, the filming site was determined to be safe, which is why people believe there is something more to this tragic story. In at number 6 is Ellen Burson, who took on the role as Chris McNeil in the iconic horror movie The Exorcist. She has starred in many iconic movies throughout her long career, but none of them haunted her the way this one did. The Exorcist curse has been talked about on many occasions, linking the movie to people's deaths and other paranormal incidents. Ellen actually suffered from a horrible spine injury while filming one of the scenes, and people believe the curse has something to do with it. In the movie, she plays the mother of a child who becomes possessed, and at one point, the possessed daughter pushes her to the floor. During one take, she was knocked to the floor so hard that she injured her back and smashed her head on the floor. The scream you actually hear in the movie was actually her genuine reaction. She was being pulled to the floor by a wire that was controlled by one of the crew members. The actress spoke about it on HuffPost Live and said when the director told her to do the take again, she told him she got hurt and that she can't be pulled down that hard. He told her that it has to look real, but that he told the crew member not to pull so hard. She said, but then I'm not sure that he didn't cancel that behind my back because the guy smashed me to the floor. She ended up permanently injuring her spine from the scene and other members of the crew say that she actually wasn't pulled down hard by the crew member. They believe that a demon force is actually what threw her to the ground with that much force since they were experiencing other paranormal things on set. She had to continue living with her injury and said that she still suffers from it to this day. Halfway through at number 5 is Richard Lawson who played Ryan in the original movie Poltergeist. He is believed to be just another victim of the Poltergeist curse. The actor is still alive and well, unlike some of his other cast members who weren't so lucky. However, he was affected by the suspected curse in 1992 when he boarded flight 405 that was headed to Cleveland. It was reported that many passengers on the flight were feeling uneasy beforehand, almost like they knew something bad was going to happen. The actor himself was one of those people, and he was actually bumped to first class after a flight attendant recognized him. Shortly after takeoff, the plane crashed into a bay due to a failed takeoff. The plane had a total of 51 people who were trapped in their seats, and 27 of those people died, including someone who was assigned in his original seat. The actor survived, and if he hadn't been bumped up to first class last minute, he probably wouldn't be. People believe that the curse got a hold of his flight, but it must have been something more powerful that got him that seat change. Am I right? That is a little crazy. Okay guys, we are coming into number 4 with John Belushi. This one is a weird situation if you ask me. The actor was just the first person to be killed after only accepting a role. It is believed that everyone who read this script for this specific role was hit with the deadly curse. The unreleased movie was called A Took and it was a comedy screenplay written about an Eskimo who goes to New York City. And no, I am not joking, this is literally like a 100% serious. It was never filmed and apparently it's because of this so called curse that was linked to it all. It all started with the actor John Belushi who read the script and accepted the role but died shortly after due to a drug overdose in 1982. Some people would say, so what? But after his death, the lead role then went to Sam Kinison. Production had been delayed because he kept demanding that parts of the movie be rewritten. He wasn't totally thrilled about the script. The production ended up coming to a complete halt because of disagreements he had with the studio United artists. However, just a few years later, he died in a car crash. In 1994, the role once again was passed to John Candy. He accepted the role, not knowing that the script had some sort of weird curse, and then died of a heart attack not long after. After that, the screenplay was said to be... <clears throat> after that, the screenplay... What am I saying? After that, the screenplay was put to rest and buried somewhere in Hollywood. I think that this story in itself could actually be a movie. A haunted script that kills every actor who reads it? I feel like that would be a really good movie. Someone should write that script for me. Alright guys, at number 3 is Jack McGowan, one of the actors who is believed to have died because of the famous exorcist curse. The actor played Burt Dennings in the movie and when the movie was in post production, he died from a heart attack related to a case of the flu. People believe that everyone who died or was affected by this movie 
movie was because of some sadistic curse. What was so strange about Jack's death was that his co-star Vasiliki Malayaros also died while the film was in post production and both of their characters died in the film as well. Neither of them made it to see the final product of the movie which made people feel that these deaths were very eerie. They acted in the movie in which their characters were killed by sadistic curse but then died shortly after filming from the same curse. It's almost like the movie represented what was about to happen, like a final destination theory or something. At number 2 is Brandon Lee. The actor's death was a total freak accident and caused a lot of controversy because people believe the actor was cursed while filming the movie The Crow. The movie is about a musician named Eric who Brandon Lee played and his fiance who are brutally murdered the night before their wedding by members of a violent gang. The actor had almost completed filming and only had 3 days left to shoot. He was shooting a scene in which several thugs shoot at his character but instead the actor was actually really shot and killed. Apparently what happened was because production had time constraints the prop crew members used real bullets with the powder charges removed rather than dummy bullets. On one gun the live primer which is the charge that ignites the powder of the bullet fired off one bullet which lodged it in the barrel of the gun. Then during another take an actor fired blank rounds in the gun which sent the bullet flying into Lee's abdomen. Six hours later the actor had died because of the wound. The rumors of the actor being cursed began to circulate because the accident was almost too spooky to be true. His character in the movie dies at gunpoint by a gang and that is exactly what happened to him while filming that scene. How weird is that? Taking our number one spot is Heather O'Rourke, another actor who was alleged to be taken by the poltergeist cursed. She was only 12 years old when she passed away and it was while filming the series that she suffered from a mysterious illness. Sadly the third movie was the last one that she made. Months before filming began doctors misdiagnosed her with Crohn's disease. She was prescribed a steroid to treat the disease during the time she was filming Poltergeist 3. But on January 31st 1988 Heather collapsed and was rushed to the hospital where they found a bowel obstruction. During the attempt to surgically remove the blockage she went into septic shock and suffered cardiac arrest. Her death was only months before the release of the third movie which was actually the final chapter in the original series. A few of her other co-stars also passed away after filming which is what had people believing there is no way her mysterious death wasn't because of this so called curse. At the beginning of our list in spot number 10 is Annabelle. Like the Conjuring movies Annabelle is another movie associated with Ed and Lorraine Warren's paranormal investigations. But in this one it is not a house that's haunted it is a doll. The very possessed doll is believed to be what actually cursed the movie. There is even more proof than that though. One time on set an actor who was dressed up like the demon walked by a big lighting fixture and it came crashing down on a janitor who was working behind him. In the original movie script the janitor died the same way in the exact same hallway. There is just way too much coincidence in that for there to be a realistic explanation you know. The director of the movie John R. Leonetti also reported that he saw three finger slashes drawn through the dust along a window. It wasn't just someone's fingers though it looked identical to the three talons that the demon has in the movie. He said it was so spooky that he had to take a picture of it to even believe it. When speaking on the movie being cursed because the animal doll is in fact a real haunted doll he says the fact it is real is awesome because it really sets the tone because it is real. It could really effing scare people. Actually one guy I knew died after he saw it. Crazy sh**. That is crazy sh**. Man. Up next to number 9 is The Omen. The movie is all around the topic of the Antichrist so it's no surprise that people believe the movie has a dark curse attached to it. There's some proof in the pudding though. There's a laundry list of incidents that people have linked to the curse of the film. Let's power through some of the things on the list. For starters, Star Peck and screenwriter David Seltzer and producer Harvey Bernhard were all struck by lightning. And the chances of being struck by lightning are very slim so it's crazy that it happened to all three of them. Also during filming Donner's Hotel was bombed by the IRA. and then. Star Peck almost boarded a flight to Israel for one of the movie locations but the flight ended up crashing and killed everyone on it. But the scariest and most tragic incident of all was after filming. Special effects director John Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore got into a car accident and her head was decapitated. The accident happened on Friday the 13th and also mimics a scene from the movie when a man gets decapitated by a moving vehicle. So the number 8 spot is the possession. The movie strives off the story of a debook box. According to Dr. Jeremy Dow 
Passover, debuck is the Jewish term for a restless spirit that finds refuge in a living creature. The 2012 movie was based on a true story of a couple who found the box and kept it, not thinking anything of it of course. For the movie shoot, a fake debuck box was used, but actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan has admitted that he knew something was very wrong on set. He said, There were some weird things going on on set, lots of light bulbs exploding, just overall kind of creepiness. Don't mock the box was sort of the mantra that we lived by while we were filming this. He went on to say that while shooting, props would go up in flames without any explanation, and at one point, the real owners of a debuck box offered to give the box to them for shooting, which they politely declined. And not long after, their storage facility burnt to the ground with the fake box inside of it, which is wild. And good thing they didn't take the real one. In spot number seven is the Amityville Horror. The original 1979 movie was believed to be cursed, with actor James Brolin admitting he experienced paranormal activity while filming it. But it seems like the curse continued on to the future 2005 remake. Right before they started filming the movie, the body of a fisherman washed up on the shore of their set, which of course alarmed them. Not the way you really want to start off a film. Actor Ryan Reynolds also admits that he felt the movie had evil link to it. He said that throughout the filming process, he kept waking up at the same time every night that his character did in the movie. Think that's weird? Well, just four weeks before the film premiered, the man that Ryan's character is based on, George Lutz, dropped dead out of nowhere. The easiest explanation for all of it is to say that it's all a weird coincidence, but I'm not buying that as an excuse. I would not mess with these kind of movies. Sliding into number six is Rosemary's Baby. People who worked on the 1968 movie admitted that strange things happen while filming the movie, like strange noises and things moving on their own. You know, the typical paranormal stuff. After filming, an evil curse seemed to follow people who worked on the film. A horrific incident happened after filming, and you are probably familiar with the story. Roman Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, was murdered brutally while she was pregnant with her child. If that incident is enough to convince you that the movie has a curse, the producer, William Castle, started receiving receiving threatening letters that claimed he was going to get an illness. Not long after, he actually suffered from the exact illness that the letters predicted, and he said he believed it was because of the cursed film. He revealed that he started to hallucinate in the emergency room and started yelling out quotes from the movies. He swears one time he saw Rosemary standing over him holding a knife in the hospital room. Halfway through the list, number five is The Innkeepers. The movie was a favorite for all moviegoers out there when it came out back in 2011. It's known for being a cursed movie from the day that filming started. A big reason why is because the director, Ty West, decided to house the movie crew and himself in one of the most haunted hotels in Connecticut while they shot the film. It's called the Yankee Peddler Inn, and it's known for having poltergeist activity, ghostly appearances, and causing nightmares for all of its visitors. West, being an artistic director, decided to model the innkeeper's movie after the stories he had heard about the real hotel. So guess what? He decided to film the whole movie inside that real hotel. So it's pretty obvious that filming the movie in the real haunted hotel added realism to a whole other level. The cast and crew said that light bulbs would always shatter when they were filming, and one actress admits that she almost quit because of the nightmares that she was having. Here we are at number four with The Conjuring. Some might say The Conjuring has one of the most violent curses attached to it, as it's believed to have affected its sequels as well. Annabelle, for example. As you might know, The Conjuring was based on a true story of what happened in the house of the Perrin family, which was allegedly haunted by a witch. While filming the movie, one staff member said her dog was behaving strangely and would growl at thin air and squirm with some sense of fear. Once the filming was over, the dog went back to acting normal. And we all know that when dogs see sh** in a room, they just kind of stand there as their bargain. It's weird. Another actress felt ill and went to the hospital and told the doctors that it was the strange air that went around set that got her sick. On top of this, leading actress Vera Farmiga, who plays Lorraine Warren, was the first one to admit that she felt the movie was cursed. She actually refused to bring the script home with her because she thought it would bring bad energy into her home, but that didn't stop an entity by showing up on her laptop. She says that she found three slash marks on her laptop screen one night, which represents the three talents a demon has in the movie, like the director from Annabelle. In our third spot is a classic, The Exorcist. First off, the first ever screening of the movie took place across from a 16th century church, which happened to get struck by lightning, which has to make you wonder. However, while filming, the film set actually caught fire in the room that was supposed to be the family's home. Reagan's room, however, the character who gets possessed, was untouched by the fire, which is basically impossible. There was a total of eight deaths that happened during and after production, all people who were working on the movie. Two actors died shortly after production, and both of their characters happened to die in the movie as well. The voice actor actress who played the demonic entity, Mercedes McCambridge, died shortly after the film premiered at theaters. She was also the victim
victim of a tragic domestic violence related killing. The deaths were happening on a recurring basis and some cast members say they also had several relatives passing away during the year that the film was being made. Taking the number 2 spot on our list is The Crow. The script was originally written after the tragic death of one of the writers wives. Once production began, the entire movies filming process was just one tragedy after another. Crew members were being accidentally electrocuted, they were getting stabbed through the hand with screwdrivers and also had to deal with set trucks being set on fire randomly. All these weird notions happen without any explanation. But the most famous victim of the movie curse is Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son. Brandon Lee was killed at the young age of 28 while filming the final scene of the movie. They had a prop pistol that was supposed to carry a blank bullet but had a real one inside of it instead. He was shot in the stomach and killed immediately. What makes the whole thing even more eerie? Apparently Brandon told people beforehand that his family was cursed. He said his grandfather had picked off a Chinese businessman back in the day and that he put a curse on their family. Taking the number one spot on our list is The Poltergeist. It's one of the most notoriously unlucky movies in the history of cursed films. There are so many strange deaths and occurrences tied to The Poltergeist curse, I think I should just power through some of them for you guys. Starting off with the deaths of two actresses who starred in a movie. Heather O'Rourke died at just 12 years old not long after the release by an undetected illness. Another actress, Dominique Dunn, died during the filming process when she was just 23 years old. She was strangled to death by an abusive ex-boyfriend. Another occurrence happened on set when a mechanical puppet malfunctioned and tried to strangle the actor Oliver Robbins. The boy was choked so hard he actually had marks left on his neck and Steven Spielberg himself had to step in and pull it off of him. And one final strange occurrence was the actress Jo Beth Williams admitted that every single picture in her home would be tilted after she filmed on set. She told E, I began to think, is somebody trying to send me a message that I shouldn't be doing this film? Uh, yeah. Probably. At number 10 is Tara Reid who has the girl next door curse, also known as the hot girl curse. I mean, if I was going to have a curse, I think I would want this one. She was once riding high starring in the wildly successful movie series American Pie. Tara played a hot babe named Vicky and even made the cover of Rolling Stone magazine during that time, which basically just confirms that you are some hot in Hollywood. Get on that cover magazine. You know you're doing well. Looking back on her career now though, she said she hoped that American Pie would be the springboard for her entire career, but instead it kind of dropped once the series was over. She was often looked at as the girl next door and only ever booked roles of that nature. It might not seem like a bad thing to us, being the hot girl in movies, but she admitted during an interview that no one ever respected her or took her very seriously. This pressure is also what caused her to get plastic surgery, which ended up making things worse. In 2004, she had a breast augmentation done, which left her with rippled skin skin all over her stomach. She spoke on it and said, My stomach became the most ripply bulgy thing. I had a hernia, this huge bump next to my belly button. As a result, I couldn't wear a bikini and I lost a lot of work. Since she could no longer book the hot girl role, she was pretty much out of work altogether. Coming in at 9, Jerry O'Connell. Now this former icon is suffering from the show killer curse. In his early years, this star found fame when landing a role in the now iconic movie Stand By Me alongside River Phoenix. Before landing a slew of successful TV shows. However, the actor sadly has a longer list of failed sitcoms than almost anybody else. Back in 1995, he starred in Sliders as Quinn Mallory for five seasons and then went on to play a detective in Crossing Jordan for six. However, after that he hit a major streak of bad luck which doesn't seem to have ended. It all began in 2008 with the show Do Not Disturb before going on to work his way through 14 failed sitcoms in just six years. That's insane. Worse still, almost all of these failed to get past the first season, including Rex Is Not Your Lawyer, Eastwick and Sad. Satisfaction. Swiping the number 8 spot is Orlando Brown who lost his career to the Disney curse. It's no secret that people who have worked with Disney as a kid have sometimes gone off the deep end. Orlando Brown is one of them and has found himself in controversy ever since That So Raven ended back in 2007. He was making serious headlines in 2018 after his mug shot started surfacing on the internet. He was actually arrested 3 different times in 1 year. The first time he was arrested in January was because of a battery charge, possession of a controlled substance and resistance resisting a police officer. He was later arrested in August because he missed one of his court dates from the first incident. Then, in September, surveillance cameras at a restaurant caught him trying to shut off their alarm system and change the locks of a restaurant because he was trying to steal the money from it. He is a hot mess. 
And we know he's not the only one who has gone through this curse. It just seems like he's the one who cannot break out of it. Coming in at seven, Cuba Gooding Jr. Back in the 90s, Cuba Gooding Jr. was a hot commodity in Hollywood, starring in movies like Jerry Maguire, for which he nabbed himself an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. And then, of course, A Few Good Men. However, he began to hit a few road bumps by appearing in a few controversial movies, such as Pearl Harbor and then the god awful movie Boat Trip, which was generally believed to have homophobic undertones. Bad move, Cuba. Both of these movies had a huge effect on his career, and sadly, not even his charisma and showbiz personality could save it. The actor has somewhat appeared to be a one hit wonder than the Hollywood icon everyone expected him to be after winning the Oscar. Sucks to be Cuba. In spot number six is Adrian Brody, who's cursed by what's known as the Oscar curse. At one point in his career, he was being compared to Al Pacino, which is a pretty big deal. He became the youngest man in Hollywood to win an Oscar for Best Actor. He won the award in 2003 when he was just 29 years old. But in today's industry, a lot of people don't even recognize his name. That doesn't mean he hasn't had a successful career, because he has. He's also known for his leading role in the Academy Award winning movie The Pianist. It looked like his career was going to continue on that high. He was young, he was talented, and he already had an Academy Award under his belt. But a lot of people blame his future movie flops on the Oscar curse. He went on to be in movies like The Village and The Singing Detective, both of which were torn apart by critics. He's continued to book movie roles, but overall his career has been pretty patchy compared to when he was the next Al Pacino. It's almost like the Oscars set the bar too high for him, like too soon in his career. Coming in at five, Kristen Bell. Now you may be all a little annoyed at me that Kristen Bell is on our list, particularly Joss, but hear me out, Kristen is often labeled as Hollywood's sweetheart. Ever since she hit it big on her sitcom Veronica Mars, which was sadly cancelled. She is a good actress, there's no denying that, but the film she picks leaves a lot to be desired. She appeared in train wreck movies like When in Rome, Pulse, Fanboys, and Burlesque. All box office flops that were severely panned by critics. Now, there was a movie spin off of her hit series Veronica Mars, which was largely appreciated by critics, but flopped at the box office, proving that Belle can't really seem to catch a break in Hollywood these days. She did land everyone's dream role though when she appeared in Frozen as Anna, however, the kicker is, she never appeared on screen. It is simply her voice. Perhaps this is a loophole in the Hollywood curse. At number four, we have Christopher Reeve, who suffers from the Superman curse. This curse is believed to be so intense that it has ended multiple careers, not by being blacklisted, but by death. There has been an ongoing belief that there is a curse cast on every actor who takes on the role of the hero. It started with George Reeves, who took on the hero from 1951 to 1957. He was associated with the role so closely that it was almost impossible for him to land a successful role in anything else. He was found dead in 1959, just a few days before he was supposed to get married. It was reported to be a suicide, but a lot of controversy followed his death. Hence, the Superman curse. But a more modern Superman felt the curse as well, Christopher Reeves. He first took on the role in 1978, but in 1995 he was competitively horse riding when he was thrown off the horse and paralyzed. He was able to continue in a rehabilitation process, but died of heart failure in 2004. The death of the second Superman actor is what intensified the legend of this so called Superman curse. Coming in at number three, Marlon Brando. Like our previous number, this is yet another actor who suffered from the Superman curse. That thing goes around. Marlon Brando is an indisputably acclaimed actor known for roles such as A Streetcar Named Desire, On the Waterfront, and of course The Godfather. However, back in 1978, he became a victim of the Superman curse after he appeared as Superman's father alongside Christopher Reeve. Following this, Brando had a tumultuous life, especially private life. His son was sent to prison for 10 years for murdering the boyfriend of his half sister. And five years later, that same sister, Brando's daughter, committed suicide. In the years that followed, the actor began to let himself go physically and eventually passed away from respiratory failure and heart failure in 2004, just four months before Christopher Reeve passed away. Taking over the number two spot is Matthew Perry with the Friends Curse. The same curse went around for the Seinfeld TV series. Apparently, it means that those involved in a long running sitcom can't seem to book successful roles outside of it. But that's not totally true, seeing as Jennifer Aniston, who worked on Friends, is one of the biggest actors in Hollywood. But Matthew Perry, also known as 
Chandler didn't have as much luck when trying to break that curse. After the series finale in 2004, he returned to TV but had a very short lived experience on the show Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. I've never even heard of it. Since then, he has been able to book some jobs like the movie 17 again back in 2009 and the TV series Mr. Sunshine back in 2011. But his resume is pretty bare for someone who had such a successful career for 10 years straight. That's probably because people can't take him out of his role from Chandler. I mean, let's be real, he will always be Chandler Bing to me. And finally, coming in at number one, Halle Berry. Oh, Halle Berry. You guys know I'm not a fan of hers, which I also know angers a lot of you. Surprisingly so. Anyway, there's no denying that Halle is a good actress. She even made history in 2002 when she became the first African American woman to win an Oscar in the Best Actress category for her role in Monsters Ball. Her speech was, of course, unforgettable, going down in history as one of the best. Of course, following her epic win, the actress had her pick of all the movies. However, she fell into a rabbit hole of bad, bad movies, including Gothica and Catwoman, for which she picked up a Razzie Award for Worst Actress. I mean, we all saw the basketball scene. She deserved it. Now, she has reprised her role as Storm in three X-Men movies, but at this point, we're over it. They rebooted X-Men. I'm only here for Sophie Turner and her crew. And that's the tea. Well, there we have it, guys. Before we go, though, we just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Darwin Ang says, I love your sarcasm. Give me more. Well, there will be more because I can't not be sarcastic. It's a curse. Facts. <laughs> Stormy Star says, wow, now you are smiling and laughing, kind of disappointed. Hey now, I smile more than I don't smile. That's the truth. Right? It's offensive. <laughs> El Franco says, Jocelyn, have you ever watched any of these films? Borat is the only one I am guessing. No, I've actually seen all of them. I just have not seen a Serbian film. You haven't seen a Serbian no, film? No, because you told me not to. Don't ever watch See? it. It's <laughs> All right, guys, there we have it. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss another Beyond the Screen vid. And until next time, see you see later. Ya.